Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to our YouTube channel of Samaj and Media. I am your host and host Pratima Sharma and today we are going to talk about Bitcoin. So can you imagine a thing with the value of which was zero around 10 years back and today its value has touched almost 15 lakhs. Yes, I am talking about Bitcoin that has recently touched its all-time high price point due to which it is being talked about in the market and the media again. So I thought that this would be a right time to make an educational video on it and explain to you what Bitcoin actually is and what is its history. So let's begin. Nearly 12 years ago on 31st December 2008, a person named Satoshi Nakamoto published a paper on the internet. Satoshi's main motive was clearly evident from the first line of its paper. The first line of its paper said that a version of electronic cash that would allow payments to be sent directly from one party to another party without going through a financial institution. Cryptocurrency is a digital asset over which central banks or financial institutions have no control or regulation. For instance, the US dollar is controlled by the Central Bank of the US. The Indian rupee is controlled by the RBI, that is the Central Bank of India. But there is no central bank or any main financial institution that controls the cryptocurrency or bitcoins. Back then, cryptocurrency was merely an idea in the mind of that person. But now, there is trending what crores and lakhs on its crypto exchange just like the shares are traded in the normal stock markets. In order to understand the paper of Satoshi and the context of the cryptocurrency, we will have to understand some concepts of our economic history. Our financial system is based on a system of trust. The currency notes and the coins have the value in our society because they are guaranteed by the government and the central bank of the country. Now let us take a look in any note on your wallet. For example, it's a 200 rupee note. It reads, I promise to pay the bearer a sum of 200 rupees. This is a promise made by the governor of the central bank, that is the reserve bank. There is a signature just right below it. The note holds no value without this promise and without the signature. It will be an ordinary piece of paper without any authority. There is a small but interesting story in this context. After the Second World War, America became the most powerful country in the world and the rest of the countries had to align their currencies with the US dollar. And we all know that the US dollar is aligned with its gold reserve. The actual value is that of gold and silver. But it is not practical to carry gold or silver around in your pocket. The currency notes were printed for convenience. But US did away with the gold standard rule back in 1971. After that, the central banks of the rest of the countries would print their notes as per their wishes. But what do cryptocurrencies and bitcoins have to do with this? It helps you to guess how powerful the government and banks, especially the central banks of the country, are far as monetary policy is concerned. The fact of the matter is that when you deposit your money in the banks, you give the banks permission to play with that money, in one sense. Making use of these deposits, the banks give loans to the companies and the creditors and individuals. This is what fetches returns. This is interest on the money that you have deposited. And we have seen that in some cases, these banks use these savings and deposits in a very irresponsible manner. It happens quite often that banks give loans to big industrialists without performing adequate checks. And then these loans become bad debts. And who becomes victims in such cases? The depositors like us. Yes, but even the decisions of the government can put the common man in danger. Do you remember the November 2016 demonetization? The government led to waste 500 and 1000 rupee notes in just a single strike. 86% of the Indian currency became unusable. Do you know the original idea of Satoshi's paper? Satoshi imagined the coin as an alternative financial system that would be based on a software technology. 
and would be outside the control of the third parties. You might be able to recall the global economic meltdown of 2008. Mega investment bankers like Lehman Brothers became bankrupts. Cryptocurrencies weren't born right after this scenario. Bitcoin was the first to arrive and later on, other cryptocurrencies surfaced the internet. They were Ethereum, Litecoin and Ripple. In fact, in the beginning of the year, more than 2000 of the cryptocurrencies were available on the internet. Now let us move on to the main point. How does a crypto technology work? If truth to be told, in order to understand this, one needs to have a knowledge of advanced mathematics and computer science, which I don't have. But if you want to start investment or trading in cryptocurrencies, then basic knowledge would surface. Now let us take an example of Bitcoin. There is a public account in digital form of all the Bitcoin transactions. This is known as a ledger. A copy of this ledger exists on all the systems that are a part of a Bitcoin network. Those that run the systems are known as miners. The job of the miners is to verify the transactions. For example, A has to transfer Bitcoins to B's account. The miners have to confirm that whether A actually has two bitcoins in his account or not. To complete the transactions, miners will have to solve a mathematical equation. You might have studied about the variables back in your schools. Every bitcoin transaction is based on such equations. Every bitcoin has a unique variable and the job of the miners is to calculate the mathematical equation. No requirement of a pen or paper is used to solve the equation. These equations are calculated by the computers automatically because they are extremely complicated and the combination run in the cases which is why these miners require computers with a high processing power. And once the equation is solved, the other computers within the network confirm it. And this transaction is added to a chain. A block of transaction gets created and hence technology is known as a blockchain technology. And what do miners get in exchange for this? They get the most valuable thing, bitcoins. This system is a called a proof of work. The miners have to prove the computation of the work done by them. They do in order to get awarded the bitcoins in return. Now becomes the question of how to use cryptocurrencies and bitcoins. It is extremely important to understand that as well. Because on one hand, some people use Bitcoins as an investment. But on the other hand, some people use Bitcoins as a currency to alternative currency. A lot of people want to replace it with the currencies and use Bitcoins in the places of rupees and dollars. But the main use of cryptocurrency in the present time is like an investment. We invest money in cryptocurrency hoping for a high return in future and hence get more money in return. This then becomes a store of value just like gold. Just like we don't use gold in our daily transactions but instead buy it and store it in the bank lockers like a guarantee to get more returns in the future. Because the price of gold keeps rising gradually. People do the same with the bitcoins and this is why bitcoins are also known as digital gold. Bitcoins on the other hand are not physical. Everything is happening on the computers technologically. It could be still referred to as a niche product that does not have a widespread acceptance in the society. This is a very negative factor of cryptocurrency. For example, you can physically touch the gold in your hands. Same as you buy a property as in house. Investment will be physically available to you, but it is not so in the cases of bitcoins. It cannot be treated as a medium of exchange, but this trend might change in future because there are several restaurants and hotels in the western countries that use bitcoins and cryptocurrencies as a medium of exchange. There is a technical challenge here that makes it difficult to use bitcoins as a medium of exchange in daily life transactions. Bitcoin transactions on the blockchain take some time to get confirmed. One block process takes around 10 minutes for the computers to calculate so you can understand that it is not practical to wait for 10 minutes for any transaction to get completed in daily life. But at the same time there are some present day use cases for bitcoins 
where they work better than our traditional ways. The best example of this is our foreign funds transfer. When you have to transfer money from one country to another country, the bank deducts a lump sum in the name of foreign transfer fees. They charge a lot of fees and takes a lot of time to transfer money from one country to another. The bitcoins are more economical in this case. Bitcoins do not charge any transfer fees and takes only 10 minutes to complete the transaction. It is a much lesser time as compared to when two days are taken more than our traditional ways. In April 2018, the RBI had frozen out the cryptocurrency industry from the banking system of India. Cryptocurrency had never been directly banned in India, but RBI had merely blocked the banking access of the crypto ecosystem. The result of this was that the public could not deal in INR, that is Indian rupees, on the crypto platform. The RBI treated the cryptocurrencies with a lot of harshness. So the question arises, why did RBI do so? The reality is that cryptocurrency has some negative points as well that are mainly related to money laundering and security. In the dark web on the internet, the people had started accepting payments in bitcoins for buying weapons and drugs. And it became very difficult for the law enforcement agencies to tag track those transactions because they were outside the traditional ways. Financial system issues related to hacking also surfaced. And the another reason is that anyone can come up with their own cryptocurrencies that resulted in the frauds. A similar fraud done by a person named Amit Bharadwaj came up with a similar fraud crypto scheme by the name of Gain Bitcoin. There is an allegation of a fraud of Rs 2000 crores against Bharadwaj. Bharadwaj claimed that he had mining farms in China and mining farm is a place where several computer networks were solving equations. He said that the bitcoins that were earned as a result of those mining transactions and mining operations would be given to the investors as return. But all of his promises were fake. He took money from a lot of people in India and then fled away from India. Then finally, on April 2018, he was arrested and as per the latest update, he is out on a bail and the case is still pending in the courts. So according to me, I have told you everything necessary that should be told you about bitcoins and cryptocurrencies. Now I raise a question to you whether you want to invest in cryptocurrencies or not. So till now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do the so and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you can receive the latest to latest updates of our YouTube channel. Till then, take care of you and your family members. Thank you.